He has been labeled as a genius, a prophet, a visionary, and sometimes as an eccentric and dismissed as an utopian dreamer. But in the end, no matter what they say, he's Jack Fresco, the creator and the mind behind the Venus Project, a monumental work of several fields of knowledge that unify the concept of a new future for the human civilization. Fresco's entire life is perhaps the definition of a second chance, a new opportunity for social progress in harmony with our planet and technology. Mr. Fresco, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for the privilege. Do you feel that we live in a world of damaged communications that sometimes restrict the language and expression of emotions as well as thinking? Is that correct? Yes. Today our language is hundreds of years old. That makes it extremely difficult to talk to one another. We talk at each other. That means sometimes a person says, have a nice weekend. Why don't they say, have a nice life? Why just a weekend? Because our language is so old, it's automatic and has no meaning. There has to be a language that's not subject to interpretation. When you read the Bible, you say, Jesus meant this. He says, no, it meant that. In other words, he meant this. So you have the Lutheran, the Seventh-day Adventists, because it's subject to interpretation. A language is not subject to interpretation. Mathematics, engineering, chemistry, physics, structural engineering, not subject you know, to interpretation. They won't listen to you. So why persist on these ideals? Well, because they're brought up not to. In other words, they're brought up to, what's the greatest country in the world? The USA. What's, uh, what's the most inventive country in the world? The USA. But they don't tell us where the printing press came from, that all the foreigners that came to this country brought with them language, religion, ideas, technology, so we owe so much. For example, if you don't know this, an Arab named Algebra gave us algebra. The great museum in Egypt years ago had a library of world knowledge. Hi, I'm Steve Jones, and I'm going to look at who invented algebra. Now, algebra, the representation of numbers by variables, is something which is thought to have been originally uh, available 4,000 years ago with the Babylonians. They produced formulae, they had unknowns, and they could work out the value of the unknown by using these formulae. So that was formal algebra. At this time, the Greeks and the Chinese and the Indians were still using geometric solutions to find these unknowns. And this was not algebra. So although the Greek uh, mathematics was quite complex and extremely good, it was not algebra. In fact, it was an Indian, Brahmagupta, who developed the algebra itself. And obviously, we often think that algebra was something that came from the uh, Arabs. However, we do find that in 820, it was in fact part of the title of a mathematical treatise, this word al jabr meaning reunion. It was just part of a title, and it was this that was then used to describe this process of uh, working out unknowns from uh, a formula. So, to sum up, we have a good idea of where algebra came from. It was used 4,000 years ago. But the development came through the Indians and through the Arabs, so that today's algebra, which we use so commonly, has a very complex origin. <laughs>